Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Marissa M. Kissa or M. Kissa Creations on Instagram and this is a floss tube video. I have been absent for far too long. I did do a little like I'm still here video in October but this one should be a little bit longer and have um, some more projects in it. So buckle up I guess and thanks for coming back um, thank you for watching if you like what you see please like and subscribe I am happy to have you here um, and I'm happy to be filming a video it just it's a nice little snowy day here in Maine um, we just got maybe an inch last night and it just was enough to cover up all of the brown snow that was accumulating on the sides of the roads because while it hasn't still been snowing, it has still been pretty chilly. I don't think we've dropped into like actual negatives, maybe like feels like negatives uh, so far this year, but we've had a couple of days that were definitely single digits. Definitely saw two degrees, I know that. So not warm in this state at the moment. So what I am planning to do today is to show you my whips and then I'm going to go through my active whips, the things that I've gotten progress on since I've talked to you last. And then I'm going to go through what my year of whips um, board looks like and I'm going to show you those projects as they start and tell you what the goals are. So last year, at the beginning of the year, I did film a like, hey, I'm doing whip go and here's my starting whip parade and all that kind of good stuff. Well, I got a big fat fail in cross stitch last year. I had one finish and one start. So I really wasn't doing anything. Um, just I maybe like the weight of the world, the weight of my job, the weight of all the stuff. And then I spent a good chunk of the summer um, gardening and that took up a lot of time and it was really fun and I ended up canning a lot of jellies and salsa and next year we have plans for an even bigger garden and hopefully I can get better about my time management and still find time to stitch and do this stuff. Winter here makes really fluffy hair so that's happening. Other than that, let's get started. So just kind of overall, I um, started 2022, which we are now in, and today is the 25th of January, so full-blown month end pretty much. I started the year, or am starting the year, with 32 whips, which is I think just about the same as last year. Like I said, I had one finish and one start. And so I haven't finished that new start yet, and so it is all pretty much balanced out at this point. So let's go. What I have been working on, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen the 90,000 updates on this project. Because I am going to finish this. It is, a finish is in sight. So I'm talking about Ocean ABCs by Design Works. Let me cover up my face so you can get a good shot of that. So that is what it will look like finished. Also not going to be that different from what you see right now. So I'm only missing these two squares right here and the back stitch all the way around the edge. Although I did start that last night just to kind of make myself feel better. If you're a quilter, I feel like this back stitch around the edge, it felt like binding. I was like, okay, well, if I start on the longer edge, then it will seem like I got done faster because I started on the longer edge. The rationalizations of a crafter, they're not very rational. Okay, so let's get the big board out so we don't have to deal with any light and stuff. All right, so you guys, this is, or you all, this is so close. So close, so close, so close. All right, oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. Here is almost the whole project. We are almost done. Almost, almost, almost. 
when this is finished, this is going to be my first project that I've ever washed because of the white Ada. There's some, there's some spots. Um, just normal, you know, finger greases, the body greases. I feel like, um, and I did iron it the other day, but it did go back in the Q-snap, so here it is one more time. This beauty of a piece. So, I say this every time I get this out, but this picture on here does not do this pattern justice. This, um, this stitched up is the colors just pop. It is gorgeous. I mean, you can really see like on the crab. He's really, really red. If you look in the picture, he looks kind of orange and kind of blah, kind of meh but he's not. None of this is. Even the turquoise that, or the aqua that is around all the boxes is so much more vivid than it photographs in the picture. And even when I take pictures of it for Instagram, I have to take a picture with my camera app. If I take a picture with the Instagram app, it looks like the model picture does. It doesn't look like it looks in real life. So I kind of have figured out that's the way to take that picture and it works out much better. So that is the thing that I have been focusing on, the project that I have been focusing on the most. And I am so excited that it is so close to being done. But check this out too. So if you're ever worried about design works and like kitted everything and worried about running out of floss and stuff, um, with design works, I'm gonna say, or at least with this pattern, you don't need to. Unless I was supposed to stitch with three strands instead of two, which I don't think I was because the coverage is just fine because it's 14 count. Ada, this is what I have left over. Like there's, and I'm a fairly frugal stitcher with my thread, but I mean, that's kind of a lot because I was like hoping this would work its way out so it wasn't as much of a pain. I made this little floss card. I just cut the color key off of the side of the pattern and stuck it on a piece of cardboard and punched holes, excuse me, and punched holes in it so that it would be easier to access. And also you have to, I mean, if you've never done a kit before, you have to sort the floss. And they give you like light green, green and dark green light gold, gold and dark gold. And the only time that really got confusing on this kit was the light gold, gold and dark gold and the light yellow, yellow and light orange. So you kind of just have to like lay it all out, make your where you know everything goes and then just double check yourself and make sure that you feel like you really got that right at the end. But other than that, this kit is awesome. I know quite a few people have been enabled, although I haven't seen anybody else start. So if you've started this, especially because you saw it on my Instagram and my floss tube, let me know because I want to see it. I want to see other people stitching it. I know it's like exactly the same. No one's really like, it's not really one that you want to change up too much because it has a lot of shading and things like that, but I just want to see other people stitch it. It would be really cool to see it stitched on a different fabric though also that would be um, pretty fantastic. Okay, what else? Okay, so I'm like balancing a giant pile of projects. Okay, so the other ones that I have worked on since we've seen each other last are the two that are my WIPGO numbers for this month. So we'll talk more about WIPGO in a minute, but um, so they called number two, she, Jessie Marie of Jessie Marie Does Stuff or Jessie Does Stuff. Her YouTube is Jessie Does Stuff. Her Instagram is Jessie Marie Does Stuff or vice versa. I'm not sure which. Vice versa? Vice versa. Tomato, tomato. Um, okay, so the two that I have worked on, two of the ones that I have worked on are from WIPGO, which... Jesse Marie of Jesse Marie Does Stuff or Jesse Does Jesse Does Stuff. One of those is her Instagram handle, one of them is her YouTube handle. 
she created to help motivate herself to get stuff done a game a couple of years ago. Might be three, I think it's three years ago now. And she created WhipGo, like bingo. You fill out a board, every month she calls two numbers, unless it's the 13, which is the middle block, which is a free space for some people, not for others. Last year I filled mine in and that was bad. Anyways, we're gonna talk about WhipGo in a minute, but that's where WhipGo comes from. I'm gonna show you the two projects that I work on this month, which were two and nine. So Ink Circles 99 was number two for me, and Widow's Walk by Carriage House Samplings was number 19. I had not worked on 99 in a long time. Like a long time. Like maybe since I started it, which let's get you that date. Ink Circles 99 is my second oldest whip. Once Ocean ABCs is done, that is my oldest whip, then this will be my oldest whip. Although it's not gonna be my next focus to a finish, because um, we'll talk about that when we get closer to whip go or when we start talking about go a little bit more, but this is stitched on the called for fabric, which is Ale from Picture This Plus, 32 count Ale from Picture This Plus. This is the pattern. So it's 99 bottles of beer. There is an awesome key. Although there's no main beers on there. I am thinking about tweaking maybe one of the ones in the top row because I started from the bottom. Um, maybe putting like Allagash on there or Main Beer Company. I feel like those are kind of the two biggest ones. Um, but, so I now have 33 bottles of beer on my wall. I had, I think I had like, what did I have before? 11 plus, I had 20 I think so I think it, I've yeah I did 13 because I did these two right here and then this whole row on the bottom or sorry these two right here and then this whole row on the top and then I stitched another shelf so that moving forward will be easier like those shelves don't feel like they're a lot, but then that's a, it's a lot of stitches. I actually like wrote, I think on the pattern, I counted how many stitches across they were. Cause I think one of the, one of the things that I was stitching this on was a counting, like a, I was stitching it for a, a blah, 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 blah. What do you call it? Like a challenge that was count, like stitch count oriented. And so I think I counted on, let's see, the page that I already have done. So that's one page out of the three that's done. Yeah, so the shelves are 136 stitches across. So that shelf kind of like knocks out because there's two rows. So that's 272 stitches for each one of those, plus the little swirly do um, shelf holder thing in the doodles. That was a lot of me not knowing words and making stuff up. All right, so Ink Circles 99. So that is gonna be slated for a finish on WhipGo, but it is like not, doesn't need to be finished in the month that it's called. So when we talk about WhipGo, we'll talk about that some more. The other one that got called for me was um, Widow's Walk from Carriage House Samplings. I just love this pattern. It's been sitting around for way too long for me too, although it is not as old. It is, I started at 12, 29, 19. And I am stitching it on a mystery piece of linen from a box that was gifted to me. And here's where I'm at. So the last time that I showed this and where it was when I started, I just had the bottom grass mostly completed. None of the flowers, none of the fence. I had one cat. I had the white cat and then the black cat I had forgotten to put the tail on so I had to finish that. 
But other than that, so I made a little bit of progress. I stitched on it for a couple days and I will come back to it. The house is gonna be a little bit of a beast. It is charted in NPI, which is needlepoint silk. And she does provide the DMC conversions and a single strand or a single color of fancy floss also is in there. So I have that. And then our stitchy group two years ago, let's see. So we started this, sorry, I have notes down on the floor and I will show you what they are in in just a moment. We started this nine, or I started it, nine one nineteen. It is Our Lasting Friendship from Blackbird. Here's a bigger picture of it. The model is stitched on Legacy with Um, mostly classic color works and a couple weeks dye works. I did a full color and cotton conversion and it's not really like a conversion because it's just, I picked out flosses for, I mean, I did do a straight like symbol to color, not just gifting it off to my friends saying like, put whatever you want where you want it. I did, like I marked all of my labels with the symbol that was in the chart. Once I finish this, I will put up what I used, although I do think, actually, that I don't know if there, I was gonna say there might be some limited editions in here, but I don't think that there are. I think they are all from her, from Classic Color Works, primitive thread of the month box, which I feel like I should have stayed in her floss of the month club, but let's see if I can kind of get you these to, so that's my color palette and mine is on the called for fabric, which is legacy from picture this plus I did It, it mines on Ada, although, so, okay, so it's on 18 count Ada. 18 count and 36 count, I've talked about it before in my videos, but they're kind of those, that count of fabric where sometimes one strand of floss is great, sometimes you need two. I wanted a really kind of more primitive looking piece, and so I asked everybody just to use one strand of floss on mine. And we passed this around and everyone kind of just stitched a little bit on each person's and then added their initials to the middle part. So here's mine. I really just have like this left to do. So I took care of, let's see, this last time I picked it up, I stitched up here, up here, gosh. I need to cut my board. It is too big. I don't have any projects that are this big. Well, maybe Lily's, but okay. Beside the point. All right, so I stitched this little guy right here, and then I put my initials here. So I asked everybody to leave out. There's like a little dog right there. I said, leave them out. I'm gonna put my initials right there. So I altered, um, I altered this, that, um, little piece and ended up making my initials fit in there. My initials are not the charted alphabet, though they are kind of similar, at least on mine. Um, on everybody else's, I really had to make them even a little bit more different to make them fit into the little cartouche but so all I have left is there's a little house to stitch right here there's this here and then there's the border the border is a question mark for me where did I put that chart 
So when you look at it, I mean, in a picture, picture, and you probably can't even tell, it's not all stitched in the same color. There's like some breaks where it switches colors, but the two colors are very similar. My two colors that are assigned to those symbols are not as similar as they are on the original chart. So I think that I am going to choose a different one of my colors and just stitch the whole border in that. I'm gonna wait until, until I finish the rest of this and kind of lay out some flosses and see, I probably will do a poll on my Instagram and see what you all think because there, I feel like lots of eyes are better than just my eyes on this one, but I absolutely love this piece. It's coming, it's getting close as well. I am excited. I feel like this year I'm going to have quite a few finishes of sort of big stuff. And I think that's going to be very motivating. And it's also going to be kind of a payoff for not having had as much completed in the last year because while I was busy doing other things that were fun, I, I did miss my stitching and I miss my stitchy friends and I miss all that good stuff. All right. So let's talk about Whipgo. Let's talk about Whipgo. All right. So Whipgo again, <laughs> brainchild of Jessie Marie of Jessie Marie does stuff. Jessie does stuff on both YouTube and Instagram. There's also a Facebook group. You don't have to be in the Facebook group to participate. She does do a lot of it on Instagram. There's also a specific Whipgo, I think it's a Whipgo 2022 Instagram. And then also everybody tags, tags and, and um, there are tags, <laughs> there are tags for Whipgo and then you can also like tag, there's hashtags, and then you can tag the Whipgo Instagram. You can add the Whipgo Instagram. Whew, it's been a long time since I videoed you guys. Okay, so my Whipgo board lives in the back of my Me Stitchulous Get Stitch Done, the Get Stitch Done planner. And this is just like the cutest stinking thing. I love what she did on the outside. I love the inside. In the back, there are notes pages. So I have my whip list. This is my entire whip list right now. And then I have my whip go board. So a pink outline means that the number was called. A purple X means that the project was completed. So when the boxes have a pink outline and a purple X, that means they will be done, done, done. So I am anxiously awaiting two days from now when she calls the next numbers. Although um, I am kind of prioritizing a couple projects. But like I said, my Whipco board is stuff to be completed through the year. So there are certain things that I will make sure that I, I touch each project in the month that it's called, but really I want to get stuff done, to get stitch done. And so this planner is perfect. So let's go through the whip go. So number one was Ocean ABCs. That's in my box number one. You've already seen that. I'm not going to show you again. Number two was Ink Circles 99. You've also already seen that. The next one is my next focus piece. So this is in number three. After I finish Ocean ABCs, this one is going onto a Q-snap and it is not coming out until it is finished because I keep saying the same thing over and over again in videos that this is for my daughter who is now, and then insert her current age, because I've been saying is now since I don't even know for three years now. So now she's going to be five. This needs to be done. It's her birth sampler. So this is Long Dog Samplers Bienvenue. It 
is charted monochromatically. I am obviously not stitching it that way. I am stitching it in colors that complement her sister's birth sampler, which is Bent Creek's Baby Row. So, that's what that chart looks like monochromatically. And I love it. It's beautiful. I don't know <laughs> why I've been dragging my feet on so many of my patterns, but really this year I am like motivated to finish and I really want to get it done before market happens because I didn't buy any cross stitch really last year. I think that market this year is probably going to tempt me quite a bit and, um, I'm not starting anything new until I finish things at this point or at least until I get some big finishes off the table and so Ocean ABCs and Bienvenue just have to get done get done get done um, I would like to have 99 done before my husband's birthday in July that is the goal on that so I need to kind of pick it up because that means I need to stitch one shelf a month starting now to be done with it so I stitch one yeah yep yeah I can do that I could stitch one shelf a month I think it took me actually I can tell you what it took me because so the get stitched done planner also has project pages and so I've been writing in my notes section how many days I work on the project or which days I work on a project. So I worked on it for I worked on it for eight days. So it's about a day a bottle because it depends on how varied the bottles are in the row that you're working on. Because some of them, like you can just 898 all the way across on a bunch of brown bottles and then sometimes you've got green bottles and stuff in there and it takes a little bit longer. Okay, okay. So, Bienvenue is my next focus. After that, box number four is the Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. By Carriage House Samplings. I am stitching it in the DMC conversion. Again, charted in needlepoint silk because that's the way she rolls. And this one's been slow going too. I pick it up. I don't work on it for very long. I think I just need to kind of do what I did for Ocean ABCs and just really try to plow through some time. But this is what I have done. So my goal is to finish this block of it. Um, it is on... Dubloon from Picture This Plus, 40 count. That's one over two. Block number five is Sleeping Princess from Mirabilia. Card. So, um, Princess and the Pea, pretty much, on all her mattresses. And this is fun because there are, I think, Garrett Coffee Stitcher and Jesse Marie both have Mirabilia's going on this fabric. I want to say Jesse Marie has a Mirabilia on this fabric. It might not be a Mira. It might be like a different mermaid. Same with Garrett's, actually. Are they both mermaids? I don't know. But everyone's stitching on this right now. It's making me want to bust this out. But so this is what I have. It is on, as I talk about the fabric and then don't tell you what it is. This is on Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie Moana. This is Lugana, I believe. I picked it up in, I think, the Stash Unloading Facebook group 
a long, long time ago. So this is like her bed sheets pretty much and her, some of her mattresses. I did stitch on that last year for whip go and I got my, I, this was a goal that I accomplished. So I did stitch on it like the 10 or five or 10 days that I wanted to stitch on it for. And that is this year. The goal on that one is 10 days. Also when it gets called next is um, Z is for Zinnia to finish this block. So that's number six. So this is the Z is for Zinnia. And this one's the ampersand block and that actually, we'll just talk about it right now. That is, um, number 14 on my whip go board. So those the zinnia block, all of the brown is done. And this is on Toasted Almond by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I think oh, the Stash Queen maybe? Who hasn't made a video in a long time? Um, she kind of popped back up onto Instagram like a second for a second and I hope she comes back but also no pressure I understand because I was gone for a long time but it is nice to know that people miss you when you do that um I think she's stitching it on the same I don't know if she is still working on it or if it's been abandoned but I think she had the same fabric choice which I think is where I got that fabric choice idea from and okay so z is for zinnia that one needs to be finished the ampersand is for finish number 14 number seven is another ink circles which oh my gosh she just put a preview out of a beautiful new key pattern that she's releasing at market and so i'm like i need to finish some ink circles so i can put another ink circles into my rotation because I don't know if I want to have a ton of ink circles in my rotation all at the same time. I don't like to have like a lot of one designer. So have getting one of these two done and then picking that one up. Yeah, it's the right way to go. All right. So, um, this is ink circles, dreidel, dreidel. Thank you for making a Hanukkah pattern because while I celebrate both holidays, I definitely know how it can feel to not have a lot of stuff based on the holiday that you celebrate around that time of year, <laughs> which of course I've got a Christmas needle minder on, the <laughs> on one hand, on my piece, you know. I'm funny like that. I don't know if it's funny. It might just be weird. Anyways, so this is what I have done on that. Uh, we'll see. It's slated for a finish. It does go quickly. You just have to actually work on it. Same with everything. I mean, I even feel that way about lilies. And it, it's a huge piece. But once you start working on them, and you put a little bit more time in. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times I've jumped from pattern to pattern so much that you just feel like you're getting nothing done. And I think that's what I felt like for the last whoa, couple years. And I have a lot of big projects and I like big projects. I'm not a huge smalls person. I don't have a lot of shelf space in my house. So there's not like a ton of places to put little things and so I do all these big projects and then you get kind of like Ugh, I'm never gonna finish anything but now I've got quite a few things that are close to the finish line so I'm feeling better about my stitching and all happy and then she's gonna pull out this one <laughs> all right so the next number eight is 
All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna. So this is a big old project. It is really special to me though because it is the project that I bought from um, the little stitch shop in Colorado when we were on our drive out to move here and then I started it the day that we arrived in Maine. So it's it's got it's got some special attached to it and so it will get done. It is on I can't remember never remember this fabric name. Sorry, this is a crinkle crinkle one. It's definitely not on Vintage Country Mocha from Zoigart, which is what it's charted on, but also not what it looks like in the picture. Mine's on like a greenish something. And it's one over two. It's definitely 40 count, but it's one of those really loose weaves, but also like stiff fabric. So I always have hopes that as I go forward, it will like loosen up and be a happier fabric, but it's, it looks great. Like the flosses look great on it. It is charted in anchor and then given DMC alternatives. So I am stitching it in the DMC, but this is where I'm at. This is, this whip go goal is to finish the left side pages. So to go all the way down. And I think that that's doable in this year. And then I'll be sort of a third of the way done, except for that massive hill and house in the middle. And should probably get like a real project bag for this one, considering how special I just said it was. But you know, <laughs> things and stuff. All right, next. So this is kind of like a mini whip parade. At least it's the stuff that you're gonna see probably um, the most, mostly this year. And then I'll pick up other stuff as it comes, but, or as I so feel. This is Clouds Factory, snug as a bug. Bug warning, bug trigger, bug. I don't know, some people have bug issues. There are beetles and spiders and moths and butterflies. It's charted as a pillow, has some cute little back stitch on it. My goal for this is to stitch up three of the bugs, insects, whatever you want to call them. So I have this much of a butterfly done. And the colors are gorgeous. And I'm excited to stitch this. And I don't know why. It's just not one that comes up. So whip go will make it come up and then I will get three bugs done. And then maybe I will be motivated to get more bugs done. And if you've stitched this or you're stitching it or you're working on it, please let me know because I have not seen many others stitch this. I feel like clouds factory, um, they're like kind of pop culture ones are a little bit more popular, but like those patterns super cute, especially if you like, I don't know, like death head moths got really popular for a while. And then, yeah, like really popular. Like people needed to get them put on their bodies. Popular. Um, <laughs> there's another one under there that's getting covered up soon. Um, not the death head moth. That one's staying. I love it. It makes me happy. Sorry, my legs are sad that I am sitting crisscross applesauce on a hardwood floor. <laughs> All right, next is Patriotic Needle Queen. I don't have a picture of this one. It is Primitive Stitcher. I am stitching it from the PDF. I have two of the inside like needle pages done. It is charted in DMC, but I am stitching it in 
Manor Red from Classic Color Works. Freedom from ugh, The Gentle Arts. And oh, this is an oldie. So it would be Classic Color Works, but it is from Crescent Colors. Garden Trellis. So, and this is on fabric that I dyed myself, but I am super happy with these color choices. This is slated to have all of the needle side done. So there's one more um, little like needle section that needs to be completed. And in a Diana, it is Kismet bag. Done. All right, the next one we're gonna have talk, a talk about. Okay, this is Long Dog Samplers. The token. This is um, being stitched on 36 count Tyco from Picture This Plus. And it is being stitched with Silks For You silk that variegates between like 8.15, I think, and 6.66. Those are sort of the two colors that you really see in it. So the Christmas red and that like deep, that deeper, almost cranberry red. All right, so this is why we're going to talk about this. Kind of goes into my haul. But I'm trying to find, okay. My wedding colors were aqua and red with purple accents. This is my wedding quilt. This was our guest book. This is actually recently been out. This is my aunt and uncle and my aunt recently passed away. And um, I guess I wasn't ready to deal with that yet. I actually, I don't know which one of them drew this. They're both artists. I actually think it was her. It says, be friends, be happy. And they are, they were that couple. They were best friends and had the most fun together. <sighs> but that woman taught me that it is a-okay to be unapologetically yourself and she was smart and sassy and full of fun and life anyways this is my wedding quilt this is what we did for a guest book I left all these um these were all separated and little jars we used a lot of mason jars and stuff at our wedding and each jar was just a blank piece of muslin and we gave people permanent fabric markers and asked them to sign them and then after my wedding I put them all together and this is our wedding date so we got married on 9 10 11 so it's IXXXI anyways aqua red this is my bouquet it's made from ribbons I made all of these roses out of ribbons so, right, red, and I have been trying to find a aqua and a purple, but mostly the aqua is important to me, to, I want to use it to do the inside of this block, which is the initials, our initials, and also... I think I want to use it to do this whole block up here. I'm still deciding. So I placed a Silks For You order, which, you know, it, I mean, it is really hard seeing colors on computers and I miss needle workshops. So I might actually, I might have to make a phone call to a needle workshop that carries needle point silks because I also did the needle point silk route, but also still shopping on computers. So. This is the hank of oh. P 
PR041 from Silks for You. Now, as I'm holding it, it looks a little bit more washed out than it is, but it is like a, let's see if this helps. I don't think it will. Like super, nope. And you can't even get how like stinking gorgeous it is. Really pretty turquoise. So let me tell you what I'm thinking about using this for now that I have it and it's not going into that wedding piece. There is a new long dog sampler that is like Egyptian themed and like blues and turquoises were very prominent in like the royal colors of ancient Egypt. And so I think this would be really pretty in that. I also ordered a purple, which this is the exact color of my shoes from our wedding. So this one probably will go into this. And this is PR084. So I wore purple shoes with an aqua crinoline under my white dress. And this is that color. So this was a win. This not so much, but I definitely can find things to do with it. So then once that not win came in, I was like, okay, well, spending $30 a hank every time. And like, cause then I started looking at Mrs. Sadis silks. I'm like spending $30 a hank every time is just like not going to be a thing for, um, like, it's just not, I can't do that. I don't have that money. It would be nice to have that money, but I don't have that money. So I tried two different needlepoint silks. And I ordered them from one, two, three stitch. And I think I need a private, I need a, I need a shopper. Although one of them might work. So this is Jade range and ice blue range. I don't know if you're going to be able to. So the Jade, the Jade range, no, the ice blue. It's, I need one right in between these two. Like, the ice blue one, which is this one, I think it works. I think I might, my search might be done because when you go down to like one strand in it, like does it really, it matches some of the flowers. So like it matches this flower perfectly, but like this is the flower that I want it to match and it doesn't. I don't even know if you can see all of that because my camera's probably like unfocusing and focusing, but I don't know. So that's, that's the quest with this. I also can't stitch on this in the winter time because my hands are too dry and it's stitched in silk. So this is on my whip go board for a finish I think where are we the token two motifs nope not a finish so two motifs currently working on this motif and it is the biggest one in the whole piece and it's barely started it's right here so that's what I have done so far I kind of wish I was stitching it on pattern keeper so I knew like what percentage done I was but I would say it's probably the 25% range maybe 30% but probably closer to 20. all right so that was a really long explanation of this project but also we got some of the haul out of the way and it's really pretty much only the only haul I have one little pattern all right Okay, so we're only on number 11 for whip go, so I'm gonna try to go a little faster. I say as I stall. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay, so this is Pin Cushion Street by Heartstring Samplery. I need to count. I still haven't. I don't. I think I just know that it's off enough too much to fix because let's see house door 
house. Well, I don't know. It's going to be tight. Okay. So there it is. Pincushion Street. Come in the evening or come in the morning. Come when you're looked for or come without warning. Friends always welcome on Pincushion Street. I didn't start it in the middle. I don't know why I didn't start it in the middle. So this is the start. It's so cute. The colors are so stinking pretty. Um, quite, let's say almost all Simply Shaker and two others. So the first goal is going to be to count that and see <laughs> ugh, how badly it is. The second goal of it is 10 days. So, um, I got some great advice last time that was like, just budget, just don't do the trees on the side or don't do the trees at all. And I want the trees. I like the trees. I like the look of the whole pattern. And so I really would like for it to be the whole pattern, but we'll see. All right. Um, 13 free space already crossed out and um, outlined. 14 is the ampersand, which you already saw. 15 is my Christmas list, which I definitely have done more on this since the last time, I think I showed it in a video actually, which is nice. So Silver Creek samplers, my Christmas list. I'm stitching this on 36 count Wren. So this is a 36 count that I am stitching two, two over two with, um, like I said, 36 count can be kind of tricky, but with DMC, you definitely aren't using as much fluff as you get from like a over dyed floss. So two strands works a little bit more a little more better, a little bit better. Um, if I was stitching this with fancy floss, I would be using only one strand, I think. Cause it is, there's some parts that I can see it's kind of tight, but my stitches still look nice. So I'm not worried about it. But, so I have the whole top part done or the whole Christmas tree on the card. So next is turkey dressing and you can see my start on my turkey. And we're getting there. So this one is 10 days on my WIPCO board. And then Our Lasting Friendship, which you already saw is number 16. And that one is um, slated for a finish. So that one will be coming out a little bit more also because if I can get, um, Bienvenue and that one to the framers at the same time. That would be awesome. I am going to frame the Ocean ABCs myself because it fits in a 16 by 20 and I have a 16 by 20 that needs a replacement picture. And then that is going upstairs in my kids ocean tiki themed bathroom. The number 17 is deck the halls. This is from Caterpillar cross stitch. This has not been touched since I put it down from the cell. And that's about the halfway mark, I think. So I need to find the pattern. I don't know if I still have it. I don't even know if I downloaded the last parts of it. And I think I probably said that last time too. So we need to figure that out. Jen from a delicious threads project bag. All right, Yuletide shanty. Diana, it is Kismet Project Bag. And Yuletide Shanty, I will say again, this is the, 
I think first and only pattern that I've ever paused somebody's video to immediately go and purchase. And that was a Pam and Steph video and Pam had gotten this gifted to her as an ornament. And I said, I need that now. And I went and bought it. Santa is on a little pirate ship. He's doing a shanty. Um, old St. Nick, he sails the seas. His beard grows long, so he won't freeze. Appropriate for Maine. Um, this is obviously Plum Street Samplers by Paulette Stewart. And, oh, that needle miner is going to have to go away. Just take that off right now. All right. So this is what I have done. I'm pretty close to finishing the little ship. Um, the whale is another story. So, I don't know if there's any good pictures of the whale. Oh yeah, so it's a drum. So here's the whale that goes around the side. That has a lot of white, but it's gonna happen. I will do it. I want it as a drum. So I did change some of the colors in this one. Um, and it's being stitched on 36 count weathered shingle, which I think is the called for. Is the called for. If more people could make bags these size, that'd be great. Or, I don't want to put pressure on Diana to make more bags, but I love your bags, lady. Alrighty. Um, Widow's Walk was number 19. You already saw that. And this is my project bag. I made it from bed sheets. It makes me happy. Consider the lilies. And my goal on this one for Whip Go is to have the top above all of the words done. This one gets the board. Ugh, and I get hit in the face. Here's where we're at. So all of this this year. And this is one where if you work on it, those motifs give you like good feelings of finishes. And a motivate you to continue to keep stitching on it and keep getting little finishes. This is on a piece of, I don't remember what the count ended up being. I think it's like a 39 count or 38 count. It's like a weird, I don't even know if it's stitching fabric. I found it at Helen D's magical, ouch, that was my elbow. Feels funny. Everything's fine. Okay. I found it at Helen D's Goodwill. Her magical, magical Goodwill. And I think I paid $5 for a lot of this. And I think I have enough that if I do decide to stitch um, Sparrow, that I can stitch it on that too. Somebody else, I don't remember who it was on Instagram, finished this little guy the other day. And I was like, I remember him. He's so cute. She finished this little hedgehog guy right here. He is so stinking adorable. I love that little hedgehog man. So anyways, this will come back out and we will finish the top this year. Maybe we will finish all of it because we don't want to put it down. I don't know. We'll see. 
All right, my couch is covered in project bags. Alrighty, Hades. This is a pineapple house bag from Cassandra. I don't, she's not making bags at the moment. All right, Tiki Beach Sunset by Amy Stewart. This is a Hade. Um, I will need to, I don't have, do I have easily accessible? What this looks like. I feel like this happens to me every time on this. I did print out the other one that I have so that it's not a pattern keeper. All right. Not what I wanted. All right. All right. Artwork by Amy Stewart. Let's see if I can keep you from being too glary. There we go. Ugh. Stop it. Sorry, I just put my tablet on a magnet on accident and that was scary for a second. Okay. So I have this top corner done and let's see now we can go back to this and see how much I have completed. This is 1.54% of the whole project. So that's fun. There's a lot left on that. My goal for Whipco is a page finish. And let's see, my other hate is in here too. So, oh, and it is next. So, this is my hate bag. Mini Witch Way. Oh, it's starting to get bright. Yeah, we need to finish filming. Okay. Mini Witch Way. Artwork by Molly Harrison. This one is 6.57% done. And that's what that looks like. So I'm starting to see her hat, which is exciting. I have been feeling the urge to stitch on Heaven and Earth. I think because I watched a lot of whip parades of people that had their hades in them. And everyone, I feel like kind of feels the same way about them. They're like, oh, I want to work on that. And then if you're not putting in a ton of time, you don't see as much progress. So you kind of are, I don't know, it gives you like a little, it gives you pause, I guess. Anyways, I'm, I'm feeling the call to my Hades. I'm feeling the call to my, my big projects, but we'll get there. Number 23, number 23 also in a pineapple house bag. All Hallows Eve Quaker Pumpkins. Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews. I am stitching this in um, jewel tones. Because Halloween at my house is jewel tones. On Murky Light, otherwise known as. I don't have a tag. I don't remember what this fabric's called. I think it might be like cocoa or something. I don't think that the name really suits it. Oh, it's definitely not that pink. Let's see. 
It definitely has pinks in it, but I feel like the greens stand out more. Anyways, that's what I have. Do you see it? Yeah, that's what I have completed so far. Not a lot. Um, but I do want to pick this one back up and get some more progress on it. And as far as Whip Go goes, it's a 10 day stitch. Mini which way, sorry, I didn't tell you. That one, the progress goal is a page finish also, which I'm close to page finish on both of those, so that shouldn't be too hard. The way that I stitch Hades though, I pick a color and then I stitch like down, down and out in like a, remember in elementary school when you used to draw a little sun in the corner of your paper? That's the way I stitch, that way. So I guess on the diagonal, but it's not really on the diagonal. I just kind of like sunburst out from the corner. Um, and that kind of makes it take longer to get a page finished sometimes because I'm stitching outside. It's a random place for a needle. Um, stitch sometimes beyond the page but that doesn't count in my like actual hard, hard line, hayed page finish. All right, number 24 is One Nation, by Bygone Stitches. It is the American flag with all of the states in the stripes. which I absolutely love um, in order of their acceptance into the union. I am trying to figure out how to make both Maine and California, which are where we live, different. I might switch their colors on the flag. I don't know yet. Has anybody done anything like that? I guess I need to like go through, I think there's like a One Nation Cell hashtag. Anyways, I am stitching these in two lovely Victorian Motto sampler colors that came from, I think they did a, she did like a uh, Old Glory or something like that floss bag and these are from that. So I'm using Sea to Shining Sea and America the Beautiful very appropriate. The red is definitely more like burgundy -y than it's coming out on there. It is, so the DMC conversions are 815, 816. 815 and 816 are two of my favorite reds. So that, this is, this is it. And then this is, um, the blue is like a 312. And, oh, look at this giant start. Dell. So, um, this is on the fancy mystery linen. Oh, that needle minder needs to go away. It's kind of sad. All right. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, this is on the same linen that Lily's is on, like the magical linen that I got from Helen's Goodwill, but it is dyed. I over dyed it with tan, red, but it has some interesting little like kind of red tones in it. I don't know, I don't know where that came from. But you know, stuff dyes and picks up dyes in weird ways because that's it definitely is not a cotton fabric, it's like a polyester. And so sometimes that really affects the way that dyes pick up other dyes. The very last thing on my whip go list is slated for a finish, and this is the cryptid sal from the witchy stitcher. So I made it all the way down to the bottom. It's almost at the halfway point. Which is pretty exciting. Um, 
The last pattern comes out this week, so hopefully I can get back to that. But like I said, I am finishing Ocean ABC's Hook or Crook. Hook or Crook. That is happening. So, oh, I have one other thing of haul. I got it because I went on to 1, 2, 3 stitch to get those needlepoint silks and a single DMC that I needed that my Michaels didn't have. And so like charts can't travel alone. No, no, no. So this seemed extremely appropriate and it was in like the clearancey clearance and it's Lizzie Kate. And it came with the little doodads for it, which are teeny tiny. And there's a bonus chart inside. The bonus chart says love one another. Also appropriate right now. But the main chart says, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And that is really how our family has chosen to live their lives these last two years. And we will continue to do something whether it's about health, whether it's about like not being wasteful, that's a big thing in our house. Um, making sure that we are doing what we can as far as food security goes for our own family. Um, so we can't do everything, but we can do something and you can always do something. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to be back um, in the not too far future with a big giant finish. Um, I don't know if these are still available. I will um, post the link that I can find. I do think she does a digital version. So if you can't get the hard version, which the cover is really amazing. Um, it is, a, it's a monster. It is a monster, but it lives near my sp stitchy spot and it makes me really happy. So, um, Miss Stitchless, Get Stitch Done Planner. Um, let me know what you think about those MPIs and stuff on my, versus my bouquet. Or should I keep looking? I think I know who I need to call. But I will find out when I can call her and get her thoughts. And then... But yeah, I am curious, like, do I just do it? Is it just fine? Cause it's going to be like far away and none of the aquas are the same from our wedding stuff. Like I know this aqua is not the same. I know there's two different aquas in the tops of the jars on my quilt. So like, do I just say it's close enough and not spend any more money? That might be the right answer, but we'll see. All right. I hope to see you in a couple weeks with um, a big giant finish and some more big giant progress on some of my other charts and until then happy stitching and i will talk to you later bye